you like betting underdogs in college football, boy do I got the show for you. Five barking dogs on tap here. One of them in one of the biggest games of Saturday. As a reminder, with the 5-0 and sweep on Thursday here on the show, the Power Five now on a tremendous 85-57-5 overall run the last month. Go ahead, smash that like button if you've been enjoying all these free winners here on Wager Talk TV. Let's begin our rundown for Saturday. As a reminder, at any time, you can go ahead and comment down below with your thoughts on these selections. Number one, Buffalo plus 13 and a half. At Northern Illinois, my neck of the woods, the MAC, even though neither of these teams are in Ohio. Nevertheless, hurts to do this a little bit because, of course, it was two short weeks ago. I cashed a 3% outright winner with Northern Illinois, plus 28 at Notre Dame. But even though the Huskies were off last week, I still think this qualifies as a letdown spot. And it's a look ahead as well because they'll be facing another P4 team, NC State, next week. So even with this spread crossing the key number of 14, I would still take the points with Buffalo. Honestly, it's pretty telling that this spread did cross uh, the key number of 14. I won't sell you on Buffalo being a great team. They're not, but they have improved under Pete Lembo. And the Bulls should certainly be motivated, given that they've lost 13 of 14 to NIU. I know, obviously, the players and coaching staffs have changed, but still, that's going to be on the players and coaching staff's mind here, at least the current regime. Oh, by the way, going back to last season, the last 12 Buffalo games have all stayed under the total. Based on that, we should expect this to be a pretty low-scoring affair, considering that, and the spot for Northern Illinois, you gotta look to take the points in this 3.30 Eastern Time MAC matchup. Number two, speaking of teams in a spot where you wanna fade, Memphis laying points on the road to Navy. This is another one where betters have jumped on the dog, and I can't blame them. Memphis is off one of its biggest wins in recent memory at Florida State last week. And they are now a team on the short list to be the G5 rep in the first ever 12-team college football playoff. Now, I wish I would have played Navy at plus 10 or better. Since I missed that number, line is down to plus 9.5 as of this recording. Here's what we're going to do. Play Navy in the first half, plus 6. First off, the midshipmen, or any service academy for that matter, not built to come from behind. So, to quote my good friend Mark Zinno, if Navy ain't covering early, they probably ain't covering late. Furthermore, service academies, as underdogs, have cashed 60% in the first half over the last decade with an outstanding 90-59 ATS record. So Navy in the first half plus six is my look for that one. Let's keep the dogs rolling. Number three, USF plus 17 at home against number eight, Miami. I think Miami's very good, but I make this number only plus 14 and a half. So showing value on USF who hung with Alabama for three-plus quarters in a very misleading 42-16 final a couple weeks ago. That score was 21-16 with six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And it was in Tuscaloosa. Now the Bulls are home, and you've got to imagine they're going to be extremely fired up to face a more marquee in-state foe. The passing game looked a lot better last week versus Southern Miss. But more importantly, Miami hasn't really beaten anyone of note yet, unless you want to count the corpse of Florida in week one. Might the Canes be peeking ahead to next week's road game at Cal? Perhaps. One thing is for sure, though. Mario Cristobal, only 8 and 16 ATS when laying 14 or more points. So USF as a home dog is the play there. Number four, Baylor, plus two at Colorado. This is also a numbers play for me, as my power ratings say Baylor should actually be the favorite here in Boulder. So don't be afraid to sprinkle a little on the money line here as well. Look, Colorado... Off the win over Colorado State last week, I was wrong about that. To me, though, that had less to do with Colorado. In retrospect, talking trash was not the problem for Colorado State. The problem is they're just simply not a very good football team. So bad read by me there, but I'm still not convinced Coach Prime has his team pointed in the right direction. Last week was the Buffaloes' first win by more than three points against an FBS opponent in over a year. Baylor... They might be playing with a backup quarterback, and I actually think Robertson might be an upgrade over Finn. He's not made, uh, Daquan Finn has not made a great transition from Toledo in the MAC. Uh, And defensively, the Bears are number one in the country right now at defending the pass. I know they faced Tarleton State, Utah with a backup quarterback for half an Air Force, but that kind of pass defense should come in handy here against a one dimensional Colorado offense that only looks to pass. Bears most likely outright. Guys, I have a pick on Tennessee, Oklahoma coming up that will round out the Power Five. For Saturday. But first, I want to remind you my very first 5% max bet of the college football season goes Saturday 
at wagertalk.com. It is my favorite bet so far this college football season. Not only am I currently number one in football at Wager Talk so far this season, hitting a combined 68% in NFL and college after a 4-0 sweep in NFL Week 2, but I'm 27-13, and my last 40 in college football, going back to last season. So go to wt.buzz, wt.buzz slash bp right now to pick up that 5% CFB max bet, as well as the rest of my winning selections. Number five, okay. So Tennessee's undefeated and looks invincible right now. They're laying a TD in Norman Saturday night. What do we do here? Punch back at the Vols a little bit. Take the points. Oklahoma has not been an underdog in Norman since 2016. They have not been a home dog of seven or more points since 1998. I was a freshman in college that year, so a long time ago. I like the value we're getting here with what I have power rated as a top 15 team in the country, that being Oklahoma. Remember, this is Tennessee's first true road game. That win over NC State, who no longer looks as good, uh, was played in Charlotte. This is also Oklahoma's first ever SEC game. They're not about to get embarrassed. Got to take the points on sheer principle here. Oklahoma plus seven or better. Let's now recap the power five, shall we? Number one, Buffalo plus 13 and a half at Northern Illinois. Number two, Navy, first half plus six at home versus Memphis. Number three, USF plus 17 as a home dog against Miami, Florida. Number four, Baylor plus two at Colorado. And number five, Oklahoma plus seven against Tennessee. Hopefully you didn't hear too much tap dancing during that rundown. Speaking of dogs barking, my dog was going a little bit crazy while I was doing that. But we got through the power five. Feel free to leave any comments and or questions down below. Drop your favorite bets for Saturday as well in the comment section. I love hearing from you guys. Positive, negative, whatever. Let's keep it interactive. And if you're looking for more winning college football picks, check out the preview of USC Michigan I did elsewhere here on Wager Talk TV. I'll be joining the incomparable Kelly Stewart as well Saturday morning for Last Call. That's more late-breaking college football info and breakdowns. And of course, the easiest way to ensure you don't miss any of this great content is to subscribe to the Wager Talk YouTube channel and to click that little bell down below so you get instant alerts. And in addition to my 5% max bet for Saturday, I'll have two other college football plays that you can get at wt.buzz slash bp. Plus, not only am I number one in football so far this season, but I'm number one in soccer going all the way back to April. That includes a 10-0-1 run in the Premier League. Seen it well over in England on the other side of the pond. Plenty of ways to win this weekend. Consider locking in with a subscription as I intend to make it another profitable weekend. And that's going to do it for the Saturday edition of the Power Five. I'm going to be back Saturday with some, or pardon me, I'll be back Sunday with some NFL winners. Be on the lookout for that. Uh, The show should actually drop Saturday night. Until then, let's cash some tickets.